We start, of course, with the man who runs the whole ship. That is Terry Collins. And Terry, I, I mean, I, I said this to you right before you came on, but 43 games until you are the longest tenured Mets manager ever. You have to pass Davey and Bobby, but you will here early in the season. I know it's about everybody else, but that's a pretty cool accomplishment. It's it's amazing. It's truly amazing. It's a great, tremendous place to manage. and. If you're going to be in baseball, you want to manage on the biggest stage, and that's where I'm at. You know, it's it's a really interesting dynamic in camp, probably unique in all of sports right now, that you're almost bringing back essentially the same team as you had a year ago. Is it different to come back with a crew that you already know everything about and trying to get that that group just ready to go? Yes. You know, Steve, it's unheard of in today's game to, to bring that many guys back, but you know, when most of them spent half the time on the disabled list, you know, it's nice to be able to get them back in camp healthy. But, and I think that's what, like going in, you know, there's so much optimism, and we should be. You know, we've got a good team, very, good, very good team. Uh, we've got our young pitching back in place. We've got our health is good. Uh, it's all a matter of now making sure we leave spring training with, with the right guys in the lineup. Well, you mentioned, uh, you know, the disabled list last year, and obviously David Wright headlined that for you guys. As you look towards this, this opening day, I know He's at least expressed some hesitation with just declaring, I will be ready for opening day. Do you feel like if he is on track, that's a realistic goal? And what what is the, the process now with you, with Sandy, with David, trying to formulate a plan to get him ready as soon as possible? Well, we, you know, certainly it, 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 all, it all starts with David. It all starts with David. And when he comes in on a daily basis, see how he feels. But, you know, so far the plan has worked. Um, he's taken ground balls five days in a row now. Uh, which he has, he was not allowed to do, couldn't do last year. He's taken, he's had batting practice for five days, which he didn't do last year. Uh, now it's just about getting his shoulder ready so he can throw. And I think uh, as the progression grows, I think you're looking at the middle of March by the time he's ready to play third base. And if he does the things offensive that we hope he can do, you know, we got to try to figure out how much he can play. But that's it's going to it's going to end up being on a daily basis. Assuming David Wright is healthy, though, do you view Jose Reyes still as an everyday player? You know, I, I really do. I think Jose is going to be one of those guys where, you know, he's going to end up playing four days a week. Um, he's spelling guys at different spots because the one thing I've got to do, Steve, and I've got to do a better job of trying to get guys days off. You know, you got this everyday lineup, and every team has it where these guys are playing eight, nine, ten, twelve days in a row, and I'm not sure we can do that. Uh, we're not old by any means, but we've got to keep them healthy. Last year, you had some experience at least trying to figure out how to get certain everyday players into the lineup because there were just too few spots. And right now, when you look at this roster, I mean, it's a good problem to have, but you have six starting infielders essentially in only four spots. Is that your biggest challenge if everybody's healthy as a manager to try and figure out a way, like you're saying, to get certain guys time off, but also to find ways to get Jose Reyes into the lineup, Wilmer Flores into the lineup, if he's producing the way that he has at points yeah, in the past? Yeah, it, it is, Steve, and you're just talking about the infield. we got an issue in the outfield, too, to get <laughs> playing time. But, you know, it, it's going to be a matter of the communication of every day, you know, or once a week going to guys, bringing them in and trying to pick a day, you know, three or four days away that they're going to have an off day. And, you know, you'll be amazed and how many times that, that that actually works out instead of just telling them, hey, look, you're off tomorrow because, you know, when they're red hot, if they had a good game or even if they've had a bad game, a lot of them want to say, look, I'm in there tomorrow. So it's all they've got to buy into it. It's a long season. We have got to, you know, we are going to be very, very good. We're going to be very fun to watch, but we've got to keep our good players healthy. One person that is certainly a bit of a question mark going into this season is Travis Darno, and, and you've made no secret about it, about how much he needs to, you know, improve both offensively and defensively. As you look to try and get him to where you know that, that he can be, what does he need to do to hang on to that starting job? Well, you know, Steve, catching is such a tough spot, such a tough spot. And he's had so many disabling injuries in the last couple of years. He's one of those guys, when he gets hurt, he doesn't get hurt for two weeks. Right. I mean, he gets hurt for six weeks. So, you know, last year he had the shoulder injury. We're trying to make sure we bring him back easy from that. But this guy's potential is off the charts. We've seen it. We saw it in 2015. What he can do, he can carry us. This guy can get hot. He can carry us and, and have a catcher that can do that. That's pretty special. So we've got to get Travis back on track, both offensively and defensively, because in 2015, everybody wanted to pitch to him. Every, you know, he had such a great rapport with the pitchers and called such a good game that we've got to get that back. And last year, hey, I, as I told him, 
Everybody has had a bad year, and this is a game that can humble you. And we've had a couple guys that got humbled last year. Now it's now they're on the rebound. I know we, we really have to see it both offensively and defensively, specifically defensively. Though we need to see how Travis reacts in games, but offensively, and this is just you know us laymen walking the backfields. That swing, that setup looks so different, so much better for Travis Darno. Is that encouraging for you to see so far? Yeah, it is, because he's bought into the fact that he had to make some changes, that it wasn't going to work. And, you know, a lot of times you, when you burst into the scene at the major league level, you surprise people. And then all of a sudden the scouting reports come out and guys start to figure out how to pitch you and go by. And you've got to make adjustments. And last year he had a tough time doing that. But I think he's going to bounce back this year. He looks tremendous right now at the plate. Uh, you know, we just got to make sure again that we, we, we are, we're patient and yet at the same time make sure he gets the at-bats to get him ready. Well, speaking of bursting out to the scene, Michael Conforto did that a couple of years ago as well and had an unbelievable first month of the season last year. You mentioned the, uh, the log jam in the outfield as well. He's certainly a part of that. What is he going to have to do to force his way, to force your hand when it comes to putting him onto this major league he's, roster? He's got to show us that that swing that we saw in 2015 is back. I think last year in the first month, he had such a great first month, but he was all of a sudden hitting balls out of the ballpark, and we all of a sudden saw this swing. There was a little bit of a loop in the swing to try to elevate the baseball instead of just drive it, and he's got tremendous offensive upside to his game, and if we see that back where he's trying to backspin some balls instead of trying to lift them, I think you'll see the Michael Conforto of two years ago.